Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Tuesday, April 16, 2024. I pray that God will be with us today and as we go through the day, may His Holy Spirit be our guide. May we seek Him and may we find Him and may we search for Him with all our hearts. Our reading today comes to us from Ecclesiastes 1 verses 1 to 3. And it says, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, Vanity of vanities, say the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he had taken under the sun. Amen. We give God thanks. Now when we look at these three verses, we can learn a lot from what it is saying. Solomon as Solomon has experience of the world. We see here Solomon returning from the broken and empty cistern of the world to the fountain of living water so after he had gone astray lusting after the things of the world he realized that he had made a grave mistake and so he realized that he needed to come back to god so he is now recording his own folly and his own shame and the bitterness of his disappointment so you see why it's never a good thing to be lost in after the world why the bible says that we must be in the world but not of the world because we are going to be disappointed if we keep lusting after the world because the world cannot satisfy our need it can't yes you might have a job yes you may have a car, you may have a home, and you have money in the bank and what have you. But it doesn't matter what you have to your name. These things cannot satisfy the soul. It is only Jesus alone, only the Lord himself can satisfy our soul. And that is why it is important for us to to have a relationship with God if we are ever to feel fulfilled because the only thing the world will do for us is to put us in a state of depression, disappointment, loneliness and an happy state. Hear what he says? It is what? vanity of vanities and remember there was nobody who had money like Solomon so that should tell us that money cannot make you happy so you should be careful and I should be careful or we yearn to acquire these things because it can be detrimental to us on all state in all state of our lives right yes i know that these things they have their place for in terms of our survival but we should never forget that these are only things not things to make us happy but just things to help us survive and we should be mindful of that and that is why the lord says we should seek him first and then he will take care of our necessary needs amen so don't run down the world and don't let anybody influence you to run after the world and the things of the world because this is going to mean certain death for you examples for us to learn Solomon is making it clear here so as I said he does not 
merely say that all things are vain. But he went on to emphasize vanity of vanities. It's all vanity. Hmm? He emphasized that to let us know that, look here, man, it's no joke. I mean, I have everything that I could think of that I need, but I am still miserable. I am still unhappy. And I realized that when I walked away from God, it was the biggest mistake of my life. And that is why he returned. And when he returned, he wrote this. So we need to take heed to his word. And that is why when we are reading scripture, we need to compare scripture with scripture so that we can get clear understanding of what the word of God is saying. Because this is not the only place where we are advised not to get caught up in the things of the world. Now, if this world in its present state were all, it would not be worth living for. So, if this was all that we were going to get at the end of our life, the things of this world, it, it, it not makes sense to live. If this was it, it not makes sense. Do you understand? So praise God that this is not it. We have a better life looking forward to beyond this world. And I say amen. Because think about it. Sometimes so many of us, we work all the days of our lives. And we can't show anything for it. And we work so hard because this world as much as it paints the picture that if you work for this you will get it it's not always the case it's not always the case and the truth is that you can gain today and you can lose tomorrow so don't let anybody fool you and I'm not saying that you should strive to be successful. The point I'm making is that we must not forget God in all our getting. Make sure that God is the center of everything that we do because he is the one that will sustain us. It's not the things that we get. Amen. One verse says, what does it profit a man to gain this old world and to lose his soul? Nothing. Nothing. And that is why when you look in the world today, people are searching for happiness in all kinds of things, in all sorts of places, except the one place that they need to go, which is to Jesus. That's the only place that we can find happiness. There's no other place under the sun that we are going to find happiness except in Jesus Christ. So, I hope that we can understand what this passage of scripture is saying to us this morning. Right? God can satisfy our desires. Don't be fooled if we turn away from God and if we rush towards these things that are not in accordance with his will then we will atone for our mistakes and our sin and I will re-emphasize the verse in Matthew seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then he will guide you he will guide me as to how we must go about these things so that we don't end up paying for something that we can't pay for. Meaning, when we mess up and we have to live with the consequences of our action, just like Solomon did, we must let God lead us. Amen? Because 
He is the one who can give everlasting satisfaction, everlasting life, peace of mind. And then when we finally lay our head to rest, we can safely say that we have lived a good life in Christ and we can just await our reward. Amen. May God continue to bless and keep us as we seek to make ourselves an example of positive influence to those around us until Jesus comes. Amen.